is Dr. Nadine Burhan. We are going to talk today in our lecture about element number seven, A in ICA. It's about infection prevention and control education and training. Annual infection control training program had the basic goal of healthcare education and training, which is to improve job skills and competence. And workplace training in healthcare is a response to emerging issues in the field and tends to be a problem focused. Annual infection control training program needs assessment or performance improvement studies, identity deficiencies in knowledge, skills, or attitude, and serve as the basis for educational program development. It needs assessment, which is a process for determining the needs or gaps between the current and desired outcome. Element A7 had five sub-elements, and the activities for auditing those elements are document review, staff interview, or personal file, and the score for, for each sub-element from 0, 1, to or not applicable. Sub-element number A7.1 stated that annual infection control training program based on need assessment and include basics and specialized infection control training and it is audited by document review and staff interview. Document review of annual infection control a training plan is not a routinely including in the same programs and topics, but updated annually, based on need assessment and staff interest, and include lectures and practical training sessions. In addition, annual training plan need to be updated periodically. If there is an, any increase in infection rate reported from any unit, or there is any emerging or re-emerging disease. For example, Increased VAE rate in ICUs necessitate urgent training program, including all personnel involved in ventilator insertion and care. Educational program should also include basic program for all staff plus specialized program for different staff categories as specialized program from staff working in OR and surgery department critical units or ICUs and dialysis units. Educational program courses and training workshop should cover all kinds of infection control personnel of different specialties and categories like trainee, volunteers, new employee, laboratory staff, and OR staff, and others. During auditing using staff interview, Ask or interview the infection control staff about justification for programs included in the annual training plan and methods used for need assessment, either survey, group discussion, personal interview, analysis of internal reports, and etc. Now we will move to sub-element number A7.2, which is stated Infection Control Department provides continuous education and training, either formal and on-job training for healthcare workers on infection control with competency assessment, and that sub-element is audited by document interview, personal file, and staff interview. Training and education is the most important domain of infection control program to ensure and sustain the competencies of healthcare workers in infection control practices by limiting the chances of infectious diseases transmissions among healthcare workers, patients, sitters, and visitors. This can be achieved by ensuring all healthcare workers are properly informed, trained, and provided with the required knowledge and skill on infection control best practices. And further, by engaging leadership support to provide the necessary resources for implementing trainings on infection control best practices and establishing auditing tools on performance measurements to ensure the accountability of leadership and healthcare workers. What is competence or what is a competence staff? 
It implies an expert level of knowledge and skill that is transferable to the practice of infection prevention and control. Let's define learning and accountability. Learning is a way to transform knowledge, insight, and skills into behavior, while accountability is being responsible for one's own actions and disclosing the result in a transparent manner. During auditing of uh, this sub-element, while uh, reviewing the document, make sure that training files that include documentation of previously conducted training activities is there. It must include schedule, list of attendees, competency testing, random selection of a number of personal files to review the certificates of pre-employment training and competency together within any documented specific training certificates. And during staff interviews, ask the staff about last infection control course or on-job training they attended and ask the staff about the knowledge, attitude uh, and practice or what uh, we call it CAP acquired from attending these courses. It is very important to note that competency assessment should be conducted for all healthcare workers based on the assigned area and the nature of work in order to have a skilled and competent workforce. For instance, staff working in intensive care units or ICUs must undergo a competency assessment for care bundles for prevention of device-associated infections. Uh, similarly, healthcare work, uh, workers working in ER must have a valid competency assessment for respiratory triage and likewise the job-specific competency assessment for OR, CSSD, and laboratory staff. Competency done for hand hygiene and PPE use only is not enough. And of course, after each training, we should do monitoring and evaluation. Sub-element number A7.3 is infection control department provide orientation and training on basics of infection control for the newly hired staff before or maximum within one month of joining the work and we are going to audit this sub element by document review and staff interview during reviewing the document randomly request a sample from personal files of the newly hired staff in order to to look for their infection control training attendance and competencies. During staff interview, ask the staff if they have received any formal or on-job training upon hiring, and all the staff must be able to recall and explain the title and the components of any training program that they previously attended upon hiring. Assess staff knowledge by asking to describe and explain any type of uh, infection control services and practices. For example, ask about the differences between standard and transmission-based precaution or aseptic technique during medication preparation. Now, we will move to the next sub-element, which is element number A7.4. Infection Control Department provides education on infection control for patients, families, and visitors. And we are going to audit this sub-element by document review and staff interview. During document review, if there is any document that is designed and formulated to help in education of the patient and visitors, for example, uh, plans, postures, or brochures. The educational programs designed for visitors and patients, if they have, are valid and incorporate all relevant information. You can check one of the patient uh, programs directed to uh, isolation surface and practices, post discharge wound care for prevention of surgical site infection. During interview, randomly ask any visitor in the isolation ward if they have received any precaution before being allowed to visit the isolated relative. If so, ask the visitor about these precautions and if he can pr practice it correctly. For example, 
how to perform hand hygiene or how to wear uh, PPE uh, appropriately. Infection control department must provide health education on infection control for patient, families, and visitors. And they must ensure the availability of the following bilingual infection control health education and awareness material that must be designed and formulated to help in the education of the patient and visitors, for example, posters or brochures. The educational material must be posted and available in all patient care areas or waiting areas, entrances at the place easily seen and readable by patients, families, and visitors. If the patient care area or unit provides an education to patients that must be documented in the patient file, for example, hemodialysis patients must receive education about personal hygiene, importance of frequent hand hygiene, care of central venous catheter at home, and how to take shower with an intact central venous catheter. Last sub-element is element number A, 7.5. Basic Infection Control Skill License or BEXEL training program is implemented and all healthcare workers in the hospital have been trained and received BEXEL license. And that sub-element is also audited by document review and staff interview. Updated BEXEL trainers guide is available for the trainer and all Bixel educational material are updated accordingly. If there is any document approves that the certification of Bixel trainers in the hospital, either valid cer certified Bixel trainer card or a memo from infection control directorate in the region or uh, the health cluster. Review if there is any documentation method used for registration of Bixel data, for example, in HISLIN or manually. If there is any tracking system in the facility for checking the validity of Bixel license for staff and detect the expired license. Review if there is any plan and schedule for training and renewal of Bixel license for the staff. Randomly select three healthcare workers during clinical round and check their Bixel license for validity and also check their data on the Bixel program uh, database. During staff interview, select one of the Bexel trainer in the facility, discuss with him or with her about all the component of the Bexel license and evaluate his or her knowledge level. Ask him or her to select or to demonstrate one or more about the Bexel component, for example, hand hygiene technique and the technique of donning and doffing PPEs. Kindly note that this sub-element is applicable to all MOH hospitals and private hospitals only. Non-MOH governmental hospitals are currently not included. Thank you for your time and for more information please visit our website.